Hey guys, so The Rock and I have come to a very bitter parting of the ways. This one's going to be a longer video. Um, oh, I might split it into another part, we'll see. So the last time we'd seen him, we'd had talking about all the natural disasters in Australia and I'd said maybe we need a relief fund like Maui, lol. That's definitely going to relieve a lot of pain, honestly, he says. There are so many actors and actresses from Australia. They shouldn't keep silent in times like this. <laughs> and I was, and he goes, this is just sad, honestly. Where do you live in Australia? Said our 100% American actor. And I said, oh, no, they're not silent. Chris Hemsworth donated millions, as did Hugh Jackman and many other Aussie stars, plus all the concerts that are being put on for charity. People near me still have no houses left and are living in relief tents. It's awful. And I said, I live in New South Wales, right near the bushfires. I was in Victoria during the big earthquake, and it was very frightening. And it was. If you hear wind outside, it's very, very stormy. So The Rock comes back with, that's very good of them. It's truly awful and devastating. I just pray God and Mother Nature has mercy for the people of Australia because they've been suffering this disaster for years now. You should be very alerting and careful. I need you to bear with me. I'm a very busy man. So the next day I said, sorry, I went to bed. I just got up having some uh, relax and, uh, relaxation time before heading to work. And I said, and the whole country is in a state of high alert, especially as summer is almost here, which means fires, dot, 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 like Maui. And then I continued, thankfully, we're in a better economic state than poor Maui because he didn't come back to me and I was hoping to bait him. So he comes back the next day. Hello, Julia. How are you doing? I said, good morning over there. Oh, over here, sorry. It's all right. I've been so busy since yesterday, so I didn't have time for my phone. Good morning, he said. I said, I saw the articles about you and Oprah. Yikes. Hope the backlash dies down soon. Are you okay? Because they were getting absolutely roasted in the media. I said, they went after you hard, dude. <laughs> he goes, yes, I'm good. Thank you for your concern. I've never launched a fundraiser before and I'm a quick study and learn my lesson very well. So I totally get it, he said, quoting Rock's post word for word. I said, that's good. I thought people overreacted personally. They took it the wrong way, in my opinion. I'm always open to listen, learn and grow and do better. So I do appreciate the backlash, both good and bad. I said, yes, I saw the post. Yes, they actually did, but I do understand and get it around people taking it the wrong way. I said, it's hard for the people who live paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. I am just grateful for the positive response and messages I've been receiving from the survivors, he says. I said, so many in need, dot, 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 dot. I said, at least you have the financial capacity to help. He goes, exactly. I did made a big donation myself and also received so many messages about people who also wanted to offer a helping hand. It's all good. And I'm not thinking about the backlash, honestly. I said, well, it just didn't look good. A billionaire and a millionaire asking for money. I hope you had a wonderful evening, he said, changing the subject very quickly because he realised he wasn't going to get money from me over that way. I said, it's 3.20 a.m. here. Oh, really? Do you usually wake up so early or you haven't uh, even gotten any sleep yet? I said, I got up early. I have an early lecture and I need to get some prep when I get to work that I couldn't be bothered doing last night. I said, we're covering the misogyny in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Riveting, LOL. And he goes, oh, that's nice. It's good you're already up this early. It just show the determination in you. It's always good to be the hardest worker in the room. <laughs> Not at all patronising. I said, indeed. I like your personality, he said. I said, thank you. Some may not, but I like me also. You seem like a really nice person and I feel comfortable chatting with you. It's not always like that with me. I would love to engage in more conversation with you. 
and around maybe some people not thinking I'm great. He goes, really? LOL. I said, isn't that what we are doing? Meaning engaging in conversation. Do you mean your students? He says. I said, no, I've learned that not everyone will always like you and that's okay. Yes, that's what we're doing. I'm just letting it be known to you, he said. And around not everyone liking you, exactly, that's just life, said our scammer very profoundly. I said, yep, can confirm. Okay, great. Are you married? Do you have kids? I said, no, neither. Oh, he said, you got divorced or you've never been married. I said, I've never been married. I hope you find someone. How old are you, by the way? And I turned around and said, I find that marriage is an archaic notion that isn't a requirement in our day and age. And the divorce statistics are terrifyingly high, so why bother? Because I knew that would trigger him. And around my age, I said, 42. I said, younger than you, LOL. And he goes, wow, around the marriage. I said, marriage does not equate happiness. A piece of paper can't do that. I'm glad you and others have found happiness in it, though. What about kids, he said. They're usually like blessings to us. I've always wanted a son, but God gave me girls, and I have never been so blessed because they teach me so much about happiness and love. And my marriage isn't a good one, he says, prepping me for the romance. And around being younger, he goes, yes, you are, LOL, stating the obvious. I said, I don't believe that for one second. Sorry, I just don't, around his marriage being a failing one. I said, and even if that were true, then why stay together? That only proves my point. And around kids, I said, ugh, don't tell me you're the type of man who only values boy children. That's awful. You're poor daughters. And he goes, you should read my message very well. I love my girls so much. They're my blessings from God. I said, but you wanted a boy. I said, my father wanted one. I always knew it and it affected me. I do understand, he said, around me not believing his marriage is over. That's what everyone would say or think. But I married a profiteer. <laughs> a profiteer, you hear that, everyone? I said, oh, then leave. Zero sympathy, see. Oh, really? But it doesn't work like that with me, he said, around my father wanting a boy and it affecting me. I said, you think it doesn't, but kids are perceptive. And he goes, I don't feel big of myself. I like people who keep things to themselves, when I encouraged him to leave his miserable marriage. So that was just nonsense. I said, that makes no sense. You're the one who laid your unhappy marriage onto the table, not me. I have plans to carry out a divorce, but I'm listening to mum advice to take things slow because my kids are still very tender <laughs> and this won't be my first divorce. I said, well, good luck and be careful. Do not disrespect your wife in any way because your kids will find out one day. Trust me, I know, and they'll hate you for it. There is something you need to know about us celebrity, he informs me. We might be having a hard time problem with our partner, love us. But to avoid rumours and bad talks from fans, we pretend as if we are always happy. I said, keep your marriage woes away from your kids. I'm not being disrespectful in any ways, he said, around being disrespectful to his wife. And around, you know, keeping things to themselves. I said, that's not news. I said, I know. I'm just warning you from a child's perspective about being disrespectful. Well, you won't really understand where I'm coming from because you have a different perspective about marriage. Our scammer informs me. I said, I watched my parents and that's enough. This is not going to be the first time I'm getting divorced, Julie, he informs me. I said, and given your history, why do you value marriage then? I said, exactly, why bother? That's my point. It just costs money and hurt feelings and pain to the family. There's no need to marry in this century, none. You can live with someone and be happily together without being married. I value my girls so much and I do have high respect for my mum. That's just the truth, <laughs> he informs me around why he's staying married. You're actually right. 
if you're looking at it that way, he says, changing his mind, obviously, mirroring me. Old scammer tactic. I do understand your point. I love how you put your words together, and I'm glad to meet you. I hope you have a wonderful day ahead, he said. I said, I hope so also. Tuesday is my least favourite day of the week. So the next day. Good night, he says at two in the morning. May you have a sound sleep and wake up tomorrow with new hopes and positive energy. I said, hi, it's actually morning here. Well, about 3.30 and I'm up for work. Hello, Julia, he says several hours later. How are you doing? And I ignored him. And yesterday morning, I said, I'm fine, thanks. We keep missing each other due to the time difference. That's right. We have big time difference between us. I hope you're having a lovely morning. I said, it's okay so far. Looks like it'll be a cold day, but at least it's Thursday. The week is almost over. How are you spending your weekend? He asks. Okay. I said, I'm not sure yet. I haven't made any plans. I'll see what comes up. I definitely need to go out and buy a new microwave. Remember that, everyone. I said, mine is looking a little old and ratty, LOL. Oh, he said, sorry about that, LOL. I said, sorry about what? Did you just figured out about it? He says, very concerned. I said, about what? The microwave? No. I just decided to go out and buy a new one, that's all. It's okay. The old microwave isn't suffering or anything. I'll gently put it to sleep. It won't feel a thing, I promise, LOL. And his response was, okay. Because <laughs> he didn't read it, obviously. So tell me, what do you love doing when you are alone? These no Seriously, guys, does anyone ever talk like this? Please tell me, has ever, anyone ever asked you these stupid questions? I said, what do you mean? What do you do when you are alone, he said. I said, um, what a strange question. The same as everyone else. Read, watch TV, do chores, that sort of thing. I don't go and stare pensively out at the ocean like in some film, if that's what you mean. Why do you feel it's a strange question, said our West African scammer. And he goes, okay, that's great. Around me, not going to the ocean and staring pensively. I said, because never once have I heard anyone ask this of anybody. Are you doing a survey? I said, what do you like to do when you're alone? Hoping kind of he didn't tell me. I love going to the beach, read, play pianos, music and watch movies, he said. Oh my you love thinking so much. It's just a normal question. I said, are you going to answer then, if it's, sat, if it's so normal? I thought I already answered you, he said. I said, tell me again. And no, you definitely did not tell me. Are you getting your chats mixed up? No, I'm not. I told you I love going to the beach, reading, play piano, listen to some music and watch movies. I think you're the one not paying much attention. What are you up to? I said, no, that's hobbies. We both talked about hobbies. Then you asked about what I did alone. Two totally different things. Or you wouldn't have asked me that either. Again. And I go, incorrect, around not paying attention. I said, I have no other chat happening concurrently. Maybe later I will. No, we both haven't talked about hobbies, and I just told you what I love doing alone, says the man who obviously had no idea what hobbies are and versus what you love doing alone, because chores are not a hobby. I don't know about you guys. Maybe you will, he says, reading about what, you know, hobbies and what I love doing. I said, hobbies are very different from what I like doing alone. Why not just ask my hobbies? I do some hobbies with friends. And then I said, sorry, maybe I will what? You reply to your own chat. Oh my God, he did too. Shit, I missed that, guys. He replied to his own chat. Oh my God. He goes, okay, what are your hobbies? <laughs> I said, oh my God. I love reading, writing, 
underwater ice skating, I dance a little, and of course, being with friends. I wanted to see if he actually paid attention. Yes, he said, around replying to his own chat. That was a mistake. You said something about not having other chats happening currently, but maybe later you will. I was just asking what you meant. Starting to get suspicious, right, that I'm talking to scammers. And around my hobbies, he goes, okay, that's great. Where do you love going? So I ignored his question about chats. I said, as in visiting, I travel to Europe every year and obviously around Australia. Okay. So, are you currently at work at the moment? I said, no, not yet, but I have time. And then because he kind of went away or whatever, and we were talking about chats and hobbies, I said, oh, so no offence, but if this is your idea of a conversation, I'll have to leave it here. Have a nice day slash evening and thanks for reaching out. You're obviously too busy to chat and hustling, and dropping in to say hello and to ask a question or two and then going again is not a friendship I'm looking for. Respect for you, respect to you and goodbye. Thanks again for saying hi. No, this is not my idea of a conversation. He comes back about an hour later. But I'm currently doing my morning workout. You should know I'm very addicted to my workout. I said, then please don't message and start a conversation you have no intention of having. Have a nice day. I don't know why you always love taking everything so personal. Of course, I do have intention of having a conversation with you. I didn't even know you were already up so early, said the man who had been speaking to me for the last two hours. You don't have to take it to heart. It's just been a an hobby, an hobby for me working out. <laughs> I said, then go work out. I'm taking a five right now. Do you work out? I said, no, I don't. I don't like gyms. Okay, I do get it now, lol. So tell me what you love doing. Oh, this guy was so boring, guys. I said, you already asked me this morning. I'm talking in the aspect of not liking the gym. I said, I don't work out. I like walking. You already know what I asked you, he said. Well, that's also an exercise. And when I ignored him because I'd had enough... Hello, Julia. How are you going? Later on the same day. I said, I'm good and you. I apologise about earlier for not being able to finish our conversation. I'm usually very busy, but whenever I get a message from you, I always find myself running back to you. Trying to lay the foundation of a romance. I'm doing great, thank you. I said, that's good. What are you up to, he said. I said, nothing, just checking socials and sending messages, etc. Oh, okay, he said. I just finished handling business with some of my visitors. And obviously I ignored that and said, that's good. He goes, what do you do? I hope you had an amazing day at work. I said, I thought I'd mentioned it already. I'm an English professor. I teach literature mainly. That's great. I hope your students ain't always stressful because I recall you saying Tuesday was your least favourite day, said our scammer scrambling for conversation. I said the job is great. I just don't like Tuesdays. They're long or feel long for some reason. Okay, he says. I can tell you're very good at what you do. So how long have you been an English professor? I said, since I graduated from university, I got my master's and then my doctorate while teaching. Then I got tenure. Mind you, at this point, he kept flickering in and out. So he was obviously chatting with other people. Wow, that's amazing, he said. And that was how long ago? And then he went away again. I said, as in, when did I finish uni? I got my BA and dip ed at 22. My master's took a little longer, obviously. And then I got my doctorate later. Tell me about your wrestling days. Surely you have fun stories. Wow, that's very interesting. I'm sure your parents was very proud of you, he said. I said my whole family were academic. Oh, yes, there's so many stories. I can't even remember vividly, he said around his wrestling. I said I'd love to hear some. Do you have siblings, he said, and I would definitely love to share with you. I said, I have one sister, and please do. I'm sitting comfortably. I'm fascinated. I've been a fan of wrestling for decades. 
Now I'm going to leave that there and come back with another part, okay? Back soon. Bye.